First of all, what's up, everybody? Woo! Everybody here loves hip hop, right? Yeah, yeah. That's what So, really briefly, my name is Jonathan Escado, also known as B-Boy XL, representing Problems Crew. Connecticut's first B-Boy Crew, you know what I mean? Long and standing. I've been dancing for about 14 years. I think that sounds about right. Sorry, I lost my hand. But uh, basically, we're here to speak about B-Boy history. First and foremost, let's step over here. Hold on. Hi, man. Long drive. Anyway. First and foremost, as everybody knows, breaking is one of the four elements of hip-hop. Okay? Who knows the four elements? Everybody in here should have their hands up. Stripping! Why, you don't count. Stripping, crumping, and, and rubber dancing. Diamonds! Spinners! Spinners! Bling bling. What are the four elements of hip-hop? DJ, DJ, graffiti, rapping. Anybody? Four elements of hip-hop? And there you go, very good. DJing, good job, good job. DJing, breaking, MC, and graph. Now to me, breaking and graffiti are still the truest and most rawest forms of hip hop there are. They're the ones that haven't believed for. To an extent, haven't been as commercialized as MC and whatnot, so to me it's still one of the underground roots. Basically we're gonna focus on breaking today, okay? So, easy question for everybody. Where was breaking started? China. <laughs> no, no, not where you're from. <laughs> where did breaking begin? Where did hip hop as a whole begin? Bronx. That's right. Now breaking, as we just said, it started in New York around early 1970s. Yo, you paying attention? Don't let me go over there. All right, okay. Now, who knows why? Who knows the difference between a b boy and a break dancer? Oh, break dancer. Someone that can dance. You don't count. We know you know the answer. Anybody else? No. Okay. I'm gonna explain to you. I'm sorry. Let's see. My opinion. My nose is in the way. I would say a break dancer is someone that just tries to do the dance. Acrobatic moves and just to be commercialized and uh, show people um, that don't know about breaking what breaking is and just give them a false image. And a b-boy is someone that, that loves to dance and respects every art form of the dance and tries his hardest to do every single element and do it correctly and have a foundation and start from there and expand, I guess you could say. That's what's up. You hit it on the head. But to further that, more importantly, a b-boy, the difference between a b-boy and a break dancer is understanding. A b-boy is someone who not only does the dance, but lives a lifestyle and also has an understanding of the history and the roots from where the dance comes from. They say to know where you're going in the future, you have to know your past. So as a b-boy, each and every one of you should study your past, study your pioneers, and study those that came before you and what they did and what they contributed to the dance in order for you to make your own contribution. So that's the main difference between a b-boy and a break dancer. Now the term break dancing itself is actually a media term, or the term breaking. People back in when breaking first blew up used to say, oh, breaking, they call it break dancing because people used to break their bones. <laughs> Believe it or not. But realistically, the term break dancing comes from the break, the dancers would come out and dance at the break of the record. So that's where the break, the B and B boys, the break boys, that's where it comes from. So when the DJs would be playing at, at regular parties, and at that time, the big dances were disco and like the hustle. A lot of you guys probably don't know what any of that is. Uh, Junior, you want to show? <laughs> Junior, you want to show, guys? <laughs> well, and, and then like Latin dances were big and disco was big. So the beat boys were like the raw urban young cats that would just be at the party like, we want to get busy. A lot of people actually don't know the roots of breaking actually come from gang violence, actually. Gangs were the first ones to come out what they did was a dance called uprocking, which a lot of people basically uh, incorporate or say it's the same as breaking, but it's a totally different dance. It has its own different style of dancing. Now, uprocking originally basically is a mock battle. 
between two people. Uh, Julie. All right, everybody, founder of our crew, Problem Child. Now, we're gonna show you a quick demonstration of what up rocking is. Now, up rocking, at, at this time, in the early 70s, New York was rampant with a lot of gangs, okay? There was gangs everywhere, and what they would do is they would form what they called an Apache line. An Apache line would be straight line this way with a bunch of guys, and then another line here, okay? The music would start, the break of the record would start. You're way too serious for me right now. You need a hug from here. <laughs> so they would form an Apache line, and basically, up rocking is a five count dance, okay? So it looks something like this. So in other words, thank you. In other words, it's almost as if you're fighting, but you're not really touching. This is the way that they can express themselves without actually, without actually having to hurt anyone. So from those up rocking rules, they never went to the floor. It was always up top, no, no moves. Just up top, okay? There was never any break, in, in the original breaking, there was no floor moves at all. It was all up top, just style, okay? After a while, it developed into what we call now, breaking. Now, moving, fur moving, moving further on, around the 80s, which is where a lot of people think breaking started, was when breaking became very famous. Reason being, Hollywood kind of come into these guys that were doing these incredible spins being on their heads, sitting on all part of their bodies. And then they started making these movies like Beat Street, Breaking, which most of them are horrible. Who, who's seen Beat Street here? All right, Beat Street was a movie. I personally, myself, that's one of the reasons why I got started breaking. Yeah, yeah I know a lot of people. Wild, and then, Wild, Style. Wild Style was another one. Yeah, thanks, Bob. Wild Wars. Style was another one. There was a, even, even movies, even um, cult classics from that time, such as like Flashdance, which was in itself, of, you know, she's a maniac. <laughs> you guys see that? That had elements of breaking in it. If you watch the very intro scene, you see all the Rocksteady crew, Rusty Freeze, rest in peace, Crazy Legs, all those guys in the intro. So at that time, breaking started to take off. It just took, it took the world by storm. They started, before, actually before I get there, let me explain one other thing. Breaking in itself is a, relative, a relatively new dance, but what people, a lot of people don't know, breaking in itself Borrows from millions of other dances. In breaking, there's elements of, let me show you guys, the most, one of the most basic top rocks in breaking, the Indian step, which would be this. That in itself actually comes from Native American dancing. There's videos of this, you can watch it on YouTube, we'll put in Native American dancing, tribal dancing, and that's, that's where the Indian step comes from. You guys, who here has seen Kid and Play? That movie, Kid and Play, it's an old movie. Remember this step here? House party, kid and play, I'm sorry, sorry about that. Thank you, sorry. House party. A lot of those steps, breaking derived steps from salsa, salsa step and breaking. That's a salsa step. Breaking takes from ballet. Big influence of breaking, kung fu. Chinese, Ch Chinese kung fu movies. Watch, watch Ken Swift. Watch a lot of the OGs. A lot of the moves all took from, from breaking. You know what I mean? Capoeira was another influence. Gymnastics was another influence. So breaking has influences from all around the world, okay? Now, as I was saying, around that time, around the mid 80s or early 80s, breaking took off. And particularly crews like Rocksteady, Dynamic, NYC Breakers, Dynasty as well. Those, those crews there were the main, they, at that time they were the top of the food chain. Those crews, we're the first to give the world exposure to what we do. Now, breaking has always been an underground sport, underground, underground thing. At that point, that was the first time that breaking was brought out to the mainstream, and people were like, yo, these dudes are spinning on a head, on their necks, like, that's incredible. So it took off. It took off to the point that, it sounds funny, but there was commercials of breaking. Like, people were selling cardboard with, you know, logos on it. It was ridiculous. To the point that it was oversaturated. And what I mean by oversaturated was, the media took it and basically used it. They took breaking and they used it to the point that people became sick of it. I mean, at this point, literally, you got, most of you guys don't know, but literally, think about going out of your house and every kid on your block, you know what I mean? Little white kids, little black kids, everybody was, boo, popping, waving, 